We're going to be talking about factoring trinomials using what's called the factor box method. Now this question is a viewer challenge because it comes from Linda, one of my viewers, who is wondering about having a few more examples so that she can kind of figure it out. All right, here's what the factor box method is all about. Let's look at the first example. It's 2v squared plus 13v plus 6. Now this is a quadratic. It's also called a polynomial, of course. Um, but it is a trinomial and it's typical of the kind of things you'll probably have to factor. So what you do is you draw a two by two box. This is your factor box. Now the factored answer of course is going to be two binomials multiplied together with parentheses so it's going to look like that. And the question is what terms go here, 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 and here? Okay, So we want to factor it and make sure that we can do it um, with guess and check, trial and error, whatever you want to call it, but this fact search box method is basically a way to organize your guesses and also it kind of t eliminates some bad choices early on and it, it, therefore it streamlines the whole process. So here's what you do. I look at the coefficient of the first term, which of course here is 2, and I'm going to put the factors of that right here in this column, okay? Think columns up and down. And then I'm going to look at the 6, which is the third term, and I'm going to write a couple of factors of that in this column, all right? So we want to think, first of all, about going up and down in these columns. So the question is, how can I break apart or factor 2v squared? Well, we only actually have one choice. There could be 2v in one box and a 1v or just a v in another box. All right, those multiply together to give us 2v squared. So I factor out the first term. Now I have to factor out the second term, but before I, or the third term. Before I do though, the clue is to look at the signs of the middle and the last term. Notice how they're both positive, which tells me that the two factors of 6 I use have to be positive because we're going to add up two middle terms there to make 13v. So that tells me that both of these have to be positive and it's an addition to get the 13v. So now I could use 6 and 1 and I could use 2 and 3. Now at this point it's kind of a guess just to get started. I'm just going to say 6 and 1. All right. So then what I do is I multiply across, all right, 2v times 6 and v times 1. So that's going to give me 12v right here and 1v right here. And again, I know I have to add these together, so that is going to work, all right, 12v and 1v gives me 13v. So I happen to get it right on the first guess. Now if it didn't work, what I would do is I would, uh, before I rewrite um, any factor numbers here, then I would actually multiply diagonally. All right, and see if those new answers would work. You'll see an example of that in the next question. So you multiply across to see if the middle terms work. If not, then you multiply diagonally to get a different combination. All right. Now we have to place the factors inside the binomials here. So I know that 2v and v have to be put in to these first places here. All right, then I look at what my arrows are and um, I'm going to go across 2v times 6. Now the key is look at 2v and it's going to be multiplied by a 6. So the 6 has to go over here. All right, that is going to be actually the outside numbers are going to be multiplied together and also the inside numbers are going to be multiplied together. V times 1, so that's going to be a 1 right there. Positive in both places. And so my answer is going to be 2V plus 1, V plus 6. All right, now you try. Pause the video and use a factor box, see if you can factor 5n squared minus 37n minus 72. Good luck. All right, let's see what happened here. 5n squared can only be 5n and n. 
all right the order here up and down does not matter because we'll be able to multiply in a couple of different combinations so that one's locked in and I can even write them in here now if I'd like 5n in one place and n in the other but again let's look at the signs the 72 is negative which tells me that the two factors for 72 I use here one has to be positive one has to be negative then when I multiply it by the 5n and the n that means that it's a subtraction okay we're gonna have to subtract to get this middle term so that's actually gonna help me do some proper guessing here now if I put a 72 here and a 1 here probably not a great guess because that's such a huge number 5 times 72 or um, yeah or 1 times 72 all right so we know that, that can't work in fact not a bad idea to use pencil or write kind of lightly so you can just sort of change the numbers in the box um, now I could choose a 12 and a 6 um, I'm just gonna do 8 and 9 and let's see what happens all right so again if I go across straight across 5n times 8 is 40n all right n times 9 is 9 n all right now does that work remember I have to subtract is there a way to subtract 40 n and 9 n and get 37 no so that doesn't work that doesn't work now we're gonna go diagonally so now it's gonna be 5 n times 9 which is 45 n and n times 8 which is 8 n again I have to subtract so 45 n take away 8 n Ah, that gives me 37n. Now, I have to figure out my signs here. Which of these, the 8 or the 9, has to be negative? Well, it would have to be the 9 because I want 5n times negative 9 to be negative 45 with a positive 8n, and that would work. So, here's the 5n. It is multiplied by the other outside number which gets placed right here which of course would be where the negative 9 goes so it's n minus 9 in that binomial and we'd have to put the 8 here and it is positive so do a quick check 5n times n that's 5n squared 8 times n is positive 8n 5n times negative 9 is negative 45n that gives me the middle term that I'm looking for and the 8 and the 9 make 72 it's a negative 72 so there you go that's factor alright thanks for watching alright there you have it I invite you to go to my website now mathpowerline.com or email me or give me a call the way I work best with students is live online in my classroom so if I can help you in any way answer some specific questions the first lesson with me is free as I show you how everything works. All right, study hard and take care.